Okay, well, I'll just introduce myself first before I get started. My name is Matthew Schultz. Uh, I've been asked by Dyer Australia to answer a few of your GT questions. Uh, I have been chasing GTs now for roughly eight years um, and really seriously over probably the last four years to the point where I've flown drones to watch their activity, watch what they do, how they present themselves on bait fish, um, even to the point of them eating lures. So. I have a very, very good understanding of GTs. There's definitely a few myths out there where um, GTs are portrayed to be this hectic fish that just wants to reef you and all kinds of things. Um, generally, they are a very easy targeted fish. Um, just takes a couple of small thought processes, which hopefully I can help you through now, uh, in targeting them and being very successful at catching them. So, uh, what I've done is just screenshotted a couple of questions um, from the Dial Instagram page. What we're going to do is just start from pretty much the base and work our way up to some more intense stuff. So I've got a question here. Um, what is the minimum setup you'd use for GT popping, line, reel, rod, the whole lot? So when I first started GT fishing, I used a P10 rod reel. Uh, it was a dog of a dog fight. It was a proper P10 rod. Back then, t P10 rods were like broomsticks. Uh, 200 pound leader and big poppers. I was chasing GTs with Brizzy. Generally the fish there are a lot bigger as well and you've got to call them out over 20 meters so you've got to use poppers. Now I'm based in northern Queensland or central northern Queensland. I am fishing for GTs in a maximum depth of around 20 meters so you will only find me using stick baits. They're a lot easier to swim, they're a lot e easy to use and from what I find, found in drone footage a lot more effective. So let's start with rod and reel. Um, here I have a the new Saltiga 14,000. So generally, when I first started, you just didn't go. Th you didn't didn't use a high speed reel. Uh, I was told to use a high speed reel until I hooked my first couple of big fish, and trying to actually bring that fish out of deep water was nearly impossible because. You're trying to retrieve so much line over a high gear ratio that um, it was like, it's like getting a four wheel drive and putting it in a high gear and driving up a hill. It's just not how you do it. Um, the only thing different now is with your, with your new Saltigas, they've got such a big gear system in them, you actually can go to a high gear ratio. So if you're looking at an old Saltiga or in just an older style reel, my advice would be go a slow speed reel. You're still gaining close to a meter per revolution when you're retrieving. So really, you're still gaining lots of line. You don't have to wind fast. It's not um, it's not awkward to retrieve your lure. And then when you hook that fish, it's extremely comfortable. You can gain line, you have power, and you're not gonna grind your gears. Um, saying that, I have a 14,000 2020 here, which is a high-speed reel. Um, this to me now, after all the years, of chasing them is the perfect reel. Really nice, decent size, quite small, retrieves a perfect amount of line, but also being high gears doesn't, the, the gear ratio on this reel is higher, but the gears are a lot stronger and can easily handle it. So I'm retrieving a perfect amount of line, I'm hooking the fish, and I'm still able to get that torque to actually pull the fish up when he's doing circles on me. With the rod, um, this is a Spartan. I'll read out the code to you. It is a S80 6 to 8. So generally that is a P 6 to 8 rod. Um, if you're getting started into GT fishing, this is a perfect size of rod to get. 6 to 8 is ample for everything you can do. Once you start going to P8s and P10s, you really have to have a good understanding of actually how to fight and how hard you can fight a GT. Um, if you're capable of doing all that, great. Go to a P8, go to a P10, but um, you'll find that you'll put yourself in a lot more hurt than you need to. So, overall with that one, rod reel size. Um, try and find something in that 5,000. If you're just getting started and you want a reel that's still going to cover both bases of doing lots of things. Go to like a four and a half, five thousand size Saltiga, uh, put P6, P8 on it, and then go to a six to eight rod. 
that's going to cover you in all bases from stick baiting, popping, GT, Spanish, the whole lot. And that's generally where you want to start. Um, with your line as well, this is a spare spool that I have and carry around, carry around with me on the boat in case something happens. Um, it is by far the greatest casting line getting around. So it's a super PE. Hopefully you can see that. Saltiga PEA. That stuff's incredible. Um, all right, next question. All right, so once you've set yourself up with your rod and reel, you need to find the fish. So GTs are extremely predictable. They only need three or four little items to get them going and to, and to pretty much pinpoint exactly where to find them. That's why we were able to do it on drones because they have just a handful of little things and once you can get your head around that you can understand the water and understand the bait, you'll be very successful at it. So, um, someone's asked where to find GTs. The perfect example is here on the central coast, um, on an incoming tide, the, tra the tide travels north-south and on an outgoing tide, the tide travels south-north. So that gives me a perfect idea of when I look in the afternoon before I go fishing, I'll bring up Google Maps. If I've got an incoming tide, what I'll do is look for the northern face of the reef. Once I find the northern face, I'll look for very, very small little jut outs. Anything that, when pressure is pushing past it, it will just catch a bit of bait, it'll catch a bit of pressure as it's coming through. If you get a big flat face like just a big, big straight bank. It's gonna be very hard for you to find fish on that. You generally just gotta cast and cast and cast till you find one. What you wanna look for is very small little minute pinnacles, um, points, back eddies, something that's just gonna stick out. So, exact same when the tide turns, you race to the opposite side of the reef and do the exact same thing. Um, what happens is when you get building tides to, to neat tides. I mean, the ideal tide to chase GTs is four days leading into a new moon or a full moon because you have your building tides. As you have your building tides, you have more and more bait, more and more pressure and more activity. And generally with GTs, that's, that's their thing. They're the bully of the ocean. They can do whatever they want. So what they'll do is use that advantage of a building tide to set themselves up in a scenario where they are on the very front leading point of any pressure so that every single bit of bait that runs through to them they get first choice. That's why a lot of the times you'll find GT, Spanish and Sharks all hanging together because it's generally that initial push and that initial point of pressure where every bit of bait's hitting. Obviously everyone works full time. If you don't have the scenario where you can pick the tides and pick the weather and do everything perfect to go and chase them and you find yourself on a weekend where there's neat tides, fine, let's think outside the square now. So you've got in your reef systems or in any, any system where you have channels and current um, or reefs, you will have narrow sections of reefs. So what you want to do is jump on Google Earth and find narrow sections of channels that will then focus that small amount of tide that you have and focus it into some speed and push it onto a bommy or a point. Exactly what we spoke about before, but now you just want to look for little isolated areas. Pinpoint that on Google, drop some GPS marks and put it in your sounder. That's where you want to start looking for these fish on neat tides. You will catch GTs all year round, all through the night, all through the day. You just have to have a, a general understanding of what they want and they just want tide which is pressure, they want bait, and the leading point or the first, the first point of an obstacle that the pressure is going to hit and create that bait fish. All right, so I've screenshot another one. Preferred first cast lure and color and hook size. Best thing you can possibly do is have a small selection of lures that you're confident with using. Color has absolutely nothing to do with it. When I've proto-tested lures in pure timber, in pure white, in 
the worst colours you could ever imagine. Every single one of those catches fish. It has nothing to do with the colour, it has everything to do with presentation and where you're fishing. The only thing I'll say about colour is pick something that you're confident with. Because once you're fishing with something you're confident with, you're putting more effort into it, you're putting a bit more confidence into your retrieve, into your cast, into everything you're doing. So if you like a Lua's colour, that's your go-to colour. It won't make any difference with the GT. Now, when you get to a certain area, um, you'll see me changing lures quite often. It'll be a very similar lure, but you might just might not notice. There'll just be a very, very slight change in hooks where I will be running my most popular lure and the, the one that I use nearly flat out. It's a duo rough trail. Now, this lure is a 188SF, so that stands for slow flow, which means it perfectly, say that's the water, instead of sitting perfectly on top of the water, it'll just perfectly distill itself. It'll have just its nose out of the water. Now, that's creating still a float, which I really like, but when you go to sweep the lure, it's extremely easy to use because it'll hold the water tension, and as you sweep down, the majority of the water is already the majority of the lure is already in the water and as you sweep it'll dive down and create that bubble trail which is extremely important so this is definitely my go-to kind of lure which will work in 90% of situations but if you're fishing in water over 20 meters I highly recommend using a popper um, just to bring the fish up if they're down in the water column you want to rise them up but looking at all the drone footage that I've done a stick bait is ex extremely successful. Um, most of the fish, fish that you're targeting should actually be extremely high up in the water column. They should be up there feeding. You should never be targeting fish that aren't feeding. So generally, when your lure hits the water, nine times out of 10, those fish are already coming up. So many times while running drones, you don't even get a chance to tell the person that the fish is gonna eat, or they don't even get a chance to sweep the lure before the fish is eating it. And that's what you want. You want to be in an area where these fish are coming up and just mauling the lure. So when you turn up to an area, if you have slightly rough conditions, really good idea is to put a treble on the back of your lure. That treble acts like a little parachute. So when you go to sweep your lure, the treble will hold water tension and create the nose of the lure to dive down and get a better swimming action. If you have perfectly glassed out conditions, Run two singles, it's the best thing you can ever do. It stops the, the second hook fouling up in the GT's neck or their side, which creates a lot of damage to the fish and creates a huge amount of fight. Like it's the worst thing that can happen and you can pick it straight away because it's like pulling a parachute out of 20 meters of water. If I go to an area where I'm chasing selectively big fish, I'll upgrade my lure size. Now, that's the size of the Duo 188, and this is a very common lure that I throw. So that's a Patriot Fat Pack. Obviously you can see the size in that. Now I haven't got any singles big enough for this one, so I've got trebles on it, which is so wrong, but that's all I'm running at the moment. Um, big reason for that is because all these fish, they generally hang out in school, so you're going to have fish from 10 kilos all the way up to 35, 40 kilos, all hanging together. Once your lure hits the water and the school comes up, generally a 10 kilo fish wants to eat anything that's moving fast. They're just like teenagers, they're hectic. Crazy, crazy animals. If you're doing big, slow sweeps with a big stick bait, you don't create that hype, you don't create that craziness that's going to feed the, the smaller GT's brain. You're just going to kind of create this subtle effect that brings the big guys up. So when you're chasing big fish, just step up your lure size and slow down your retrieve completely. Um, the faster you generally burn in a, pack, in a pack mentality, you'll just get the small guys racing out and mauling it. So if you find yourself in a deep water situation, uh, my advice would be Run a, pop, run a pop or run a stick bait, but just slow down, slow everything down. Are there any tricks to fighting GTs? The best advice and the first thing I tell anyone when they set hooks on a GT is just 
breathe. Just remember to breathe. The fish doesn't want to reef you. They don't, they're not like this hectic, like a kingfish. A kingfish wants to destroy you in the reef. GTs have no desire to put themselves into the reef. They just want deep water. That's all they want. So if you find yourself in a scenario where you're casting over a ledge and you hook a GT, he's not necessarily going to reef you. He's just going to dive down into deep water and he's going to cut you off on the ledge. Best thing you can do when you hook a GT, calm down, take a few breaths, quickly suss out your scenario, which you should already have sussed out when you're casting, but have a very good understanding of your surroundings. If you hook a big fish and you're, there's a ledge between you and him, open your bail arm up and just get your driver to drive over to them. The best thing you can ever do when chasing GTs is drive perfectly on top of them. Keeping a straight up and down line angle will stop any bit of reef or any ledge catching your line. So GTs don't want to reef you, they just want deep water. So the best thing you can do is set the hooks, find yourself in a comfortable position and let the driver know where to drive, how fast, and all you need to do is breathe and reel. Once you get on top of that fish, you've got him. You're done. You just need to calm down, enjoy what's happened. If this is a fish of a lifetime, enjoy it. Don't freak out, don't panic. Just bend your knees, keep a straight back, a straight arm, and use your legs. If you're chasing GTs and you're actually using P8, um, even P6, it is incredible how much pressure you can actually put on that fish and you'll break yourself before you break the fish. Okay, so just a quick summary of what I've spoken about. Um, quickly, my I strongly this is what I can strongly advise to someone who's starting GT fisherman and wants to go out there and be successful. Go and buy a P6 to 8 rod. It'll cover you in all bases. Go and get yourself a a reel that's going to handle uh, P6 to 8 quite comfortably. So something around that uh, 5,000 size, or obviously with the new Saltex, it's about that 14,000 size and up. Set yourself up that it's nice and comfortable, and look at putting on P, P8 line. At least with P8, buy a bit more quality. That way you've actually, you're gonna have a nicer line and a better, better fit, like a further cast. Worst case scenario, you can always grab the spool. So there's nothing stopping you grabbing the spool on a, on a P8 setup. When you go to your Lewis choice, this is, never actually looked at the weight. Weight of Lewis to me doesn't mean anything. It all has to do with the way they're designed and how they cast. Find a lure that has got a casting weight set up in it. So these particular lures have a weight down the back end. So when you actually go to cast it, it's aerodynamic, wants to fly tail first and it doesn't want a helicopter in the, in the wind. Really simple. Colour, pick something that you're confident with. When it comes to hook sizes, it's just important that when you hold the lure and the hooks that you can run your hands down and it'll catch. So as long as you've got that type of exposure, your hook size is fine. Don't be scared to run singles and run large singles. But you've got to be careful not to go too big because obviously you've got to still set them into the GT's mouth. Once you've done all that and you've set your rod up, um, I always run an FG knot. FGs are just the most simple things going around. Probably 200 pound leader is going to be ample. Um, and all I do is just kind of, with my leader length, as far as I'll stretch, that's it. Perfect amount. Um, then become very, very good on Google. Go out there, catch a fish. Pick your or find your tides first. If you have an incoming tide and you're fishing up here in central North Queensland, you want to be on the northern section of a reef. If you have an outgoing tide, you want to be on the southern section of a reef. So once you go and find that, you find the pressure point and you find bait. Once you catch the fish, Mark it on your GPS. Go home and study it. Study why the pressure hit there. Study why there was bait, why there was a fish there. Once you have an understanding of exactly why that happened, 
you can take that little scenario and select any reef on our coastline and do the exact same thing on it. GTs are very, very, very easy to find once you have an understanding of what you're doing. The more you catch, the more you understand why he was there, the more you can then pick areas on different reefs and other setups where you just pinpoint them exactly where they're going to be. Once you do that and you hook the fish, be calm. Get your driver to put you straight on top of the fish or if it's going into shallow water, slightly back yourself up. Bend your knees straight back, breathe, and then just enjoy what's going on. Now, one thing I haven't really covered is quality of lures and quality of hooks. You go and spend $1,000 on a rod and $1,000 on a reel, then you go and buy a boat that's capable of going out there and chasing GTs and the rest of it. The amount of time and effort and money spent on these fish is extremely massive. Please don't go and buy average hooks and average split rings and just your, your basic stuff. Go above and beyond when it comes to terminal tackle and lures because these fish will tear them apart. It's not necessarily the fish actually biting them in half, it's when you hook a fish in the mouth and the side of the gill and he goes to turn and they have so much pressure that they'll explode any shit lure and they'll tear any average hooks completely straight. They'll do it to the best hooks in the world, the best split rings in the world, it's just sometimes you get unlucky. Um, and yeah, that's it's it's just something that you need to take a bit of a step back, listen to a lot of what people say, but also just learn from everything you do. Why that fish was there, what happened in that scenario, and obviously you're gonna have errors. Learn from those mistakes. Just go and catch them. They're epic fish, they're amazing at how they eat and how they fight and they're extremely addictive but they're also very easy to catch so just take a step back and think a lot more about what you're doing and what you're going to do for the day rather than getting on the boat and trying to pick it then. The day before is everything to do with catching GTs. It's about understanding where they're going to be, what time, pinpointing exactly where they're going to be going and just getting it done. As soon as that tide changes, you've got an hour to play with other fish, then you start getting run again, boost it to the other side of the reef, start all over again. And you should get to a point where you're getting to a, a pressure edge and telling someone to film because you're so confident that the fish is going to eat.